Okay. So I really want to pick your brain. Really? Um, but let's start at the beginning. I want to know, um, you know, when everyone's going to start their brands, there's a lot of things. It can be a bit daunting. You know what I mean? There's so much to do. There's financial responsibilities. Um, and I want you guys to talk about how you first started and some of those risks that you had to take and some of those uh, sacrifices that you had to take to start your brand. Yeah, um, I'll just speak for myself. Before, I have a hair care line called Way. And thank you. Love Way. Thanks, Kathy. Okay, so before I started the brand, I saved my money. So I knew what I wanted to do, and I knew that I wanted to invest as much of my own money as I could. So I worked on my like uh, brand proposal, my business plan, and asked a ton of questions from anybody I knew and people I didn't know, and just be strangers, my mentors, and asked any advice that they had so that I could kind of skip the line. So yeah, and uh, you know, I would say definitely like write down your goals and give yourself a good two or three years to really prepare to like go for it. Good answer, Jen. Okay, mine's gonna be really long. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think the first obstacle was trusting myself and trusting my vision. Um, I started my business with twelve thousand dollars and my entire life savings. Um, so, yeah, I, originally I wanted to do lingerie, but I tried, I failed, it was way too expensive, so I decided to design swimwear, um, which was more affordable, and I just found myself having way more fun uh, doing swimwear. But yeah, I mean, 12,000 bucks, to some people that's a lot, to some people that's a little, to me it was everything I had ever done, and I had to learn to cut corners other places because I depleted my savings. So I had to downgrade my car, downgrade my apartment. I downgraded everything for like two years until I was able to sustain myself and, and build back up again. And I think to your point about talking about, you know, your failures and stuff, I think that's so important because now with social media, I think there's a lot of showing of the successes and showing of, you know, the product, the reveal, it came out, it's great, we're all so happy, it's going so well. But I think obviously, you know, when you're building your own brand, there are going to be failures, there are going to be roadblocks. And I know you have been really honest and candid about posting those scenes. On no, I'm a big failure. <laughs> no, I know, I know. Um, and I think it's really important, and I wondered, you know, maybe what are some of the failures that kind of redirected your path, or, you know, what are failures that actually taught you lessons, and why you feel like it's important to talk about it. Um, I heard a quote from Tracy Cunningham, the hair colorist, once that, that she says that uh, rejection is God's protection. And I think it's so true. Because like, when I first wanted to get an agent, I went to like the top agency. I reached out to them for a year and nothing. And then eight months after that, they reached out to me and said they took a meeting. And I remember just being so upset. And I joined another agent I didn't love. But I wasn't ready to be represented by those people. And so it really was like, a good like blessing yeah blessing in disguise and then i think with the brand like i'm all about just being super authentic and showing everything under the hood because you know this is my first time doing a hair care brand so like i realized that i have to go out and source different companies to help make the product that we want to make and those people sometimes don't do their due diligence and it's really hard because as like a brand founder you're put on like the chopping block so i'm all about just being authentic and like we had um, some cans from a dry shampoo foam exploding it was like a foam party in your bathroom and i got tweeted these pictures every week and i was like you know what i need to address this and i need to explain why this happened and it makes our team work harder to make things better but i think that failure is a really good thing to just help you to grow and become it better and better again jen with good answers um my failures, I think in the beginning, starting out, I was, I, I had like this, I want to do everything myself and this kind of know-it-all um, point of view, so I didn't want to ask anyone for help, so the places that I was sourcing to make my stuff, um, I kind of came with them like, hey, I want to make swimsuits, I don't know anything, just help me. And because of that, I lost a lot of money, I got, not really ripped off, but and low key, I got ripped off because I didn't know the prices of how much production was. So they just told me anything because I didn't want to ask anyone for help. I was 
like, yeah, sure, here, you know, I write a check to you or whoever, or, you know, I was paying for things up front instead of the normal way, which is like, you pay 30% deposit and then the other 70% when you get all of your stuff. I was just writing a check. I was like, how much? Oh, 5,600? Sure, there you go. Um, so I lost money, I wasted money, and yeah, things like that. Just not asking for help was a failure for me. I feel like also,
doing guys it's Ryan Phil if you guys enjoy that video please smash that like button and also hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button so you guys can be up to date with all our videos so once again smash that like button and hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button and check you guys out later and keep on shocking them bros